And happy May 9th, Mushroom Emancipation Day. This is a big day. Yeah, May 9th, 2019. Um, yesterday was a huge day. Yeah, everybody's got, we got Bicycle Day. We've got 420. Earth Day was somewhere around now. Yeah. It was now, like week now we have a day for the, the beautiful thing that is uh, Magic Mushroom. Earth Day should be Magic Mushroom Day. It should. Um, so, yeah, May 8th, 2019 was yesterday. It was a, it was a, a historic day for, um, for humanity, for the freedom of all thinking people in Denver, Colorado, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, Denver, Colorado yesterday, for you guys who don't know, uh, yesterday, Denver, Colorado legalized um psilocybin mushrooms magic mushrooms and so over the last few years we've had um medical marijuana has become legal in several places recreational marijuana has then become legal in a lot of places behind that and you me a lot of our friends a lot of people in our community have been talking about psilocybin for a long time yes because they're it's psilocybin mushrooms are magical they're amazing yeah we've we've seen them work and we know what they're capable of and they're, it's, it's a big deal yeah they're capable of tremendous um helping people to to work with and cure and treat tremendous levels of trauma people with ptsd people with chronic depression anxiety addiction addiction of all all kinds all kinds um they're completely um in in terms of medical and chemical dependency they they they're non-dependency forming they're you you Mm -hmm. don't get addicted to magic mushrooms no doesn't happen you can't overdose on them yeah they'll never die of it the potential for good is vast and wide and all of the negative repercussions that come with a lot of different types of medicines and pharmaceuticals and different things, it doesn't exist. It's just not there. It, it, there isn't. Yeah. Um, we try to tiptoe around a lot of times and talk about how they're, uh, you know, they're very low risk. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, they're, they're about as low risk as, as anything that you're putting into your body. They're virtually no risk. Yeah. And we just got to say it how it is. Yeah. They're, they're extremely low risk. If you can go and get drunk at a bar and drive home, you yeah. know, that's a bigger risk than what you're going to get. If you're, you know, at your house or in a, a ceremonial situation taking psilocybin mushrooms. You yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. They're, uh, we're all putting a lot of things into our bodies. Very few people are, are living like a raw fruit vegan diet. Mm-hmm. That's just not really happening in most people's lives. Uh, and if you're one of those people, then maybe, you know, maybe mushrooms are just as safe as everything else that you're taking. But if you're not living like a raw vegan, not that I do that. No. You know, by any means, nor do I want to. But any, any, anyone else who's living a normal American diet of any kind, mushrooms are probably safer than everything else you're putting into your body. Definitely. And much and more therapeutic. Beneficial in many more ways than most things. That so doing. we wanted to put this together to talk to you guys about um, one, of the, one of the questions that we get most uh, on our platforms, on the podcast, is uh, how do you take mushrooms? Yeah, how do, how do I do this? How do what, I do What it? should I do? I get that question more than anything else. Uh-huh. And we, we, we've never really wanted to address that question um, because you don't really want to tell someone how to take an illegal substance. No. You don't want to condone that either. You know. Yeah. At this point, though, if you're in Denver or you're planning to go to Denver, we were made very aware because we can't direct anybody anywhere when they ask us this question for information. Now that we have the opportunity and a platform for them to be legal and we can speak on it a little bit more freely, this is for those people that have the questions. Hopefully we can provide some insight to, you know, some guidelines. Yeah, that's it. Taking magic mushrooms. Because they are are beautiful. They're wonderful. Um, A minute ago I said they're no-risk substances. Nothing's no risk, right? Absolutely not. That's not the case. So I I hope that I, I didn't lead that out of context or anything, but... There, there needs to be resources out there, and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of great resources that pop up because of this legislation and because of the experiences that people are going to have with these amazing substances. Mm-hmm. Um, but as of now, there's not really a lot of resources available for people to learn how to take these things, what to do, what not to do. And um, a lot of people have had bad experiences with them because they took them in the wrong setting. Yes. They did the wrong things with them when they were young or something like that. And we want to, we want to provide this video as a resource for people who want to, to use these things for the right reasons. In the, right, uh, in, in the right methods and do the right work to affect the right results in their lives. Yep. And so that's what this is. So this is the video that you guys can, can take, hopefully will help you, and you can take this and share it with your friends, family, and any, anyone else who might be interested in using magic mushrooms for the right reasons. Uh, that's hopefully what this video is going to do. Yeah, there are so many ways to do it wrong <laughs> that, you know, this is just to help you hopefully get it right. This is not going to be a count of us talking about times when we tripped mushrooms. This is going to be a, a very fact-based, um, 
off of our life experience and our research that we've done. So this is not um, tried and true. Uh, this isn't law. This isn't canon. No. This is not. This is. Th these are. These are our. Th these. These are facts that we've compiled over extensive um, uh, work that we've done with these substances within our circle, within our tribe, and then also uh, our extended circles outside of our immediate, um, you know, sort of community too. So, uh, you know, what works for one person may not work for everyone else and vice versa. In the world of psychedelics, that's especially true. Yes. Right. What works for me on mushrooms may not work for you. Well, they're, they're individual to the person and, you know, that's, that's part of what they do. Um, let's dive right in. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so, first of all, why would a person want to take magic mushrooms? Well, I think a lot of people are going to start from a curiosity standpoint. Yeah. That's, well, what do they do? What is this like? Yeah. What, what's it all about? You know, everybody's heard the stories, and a lot of people base that off of, um, you know, movies and, and accounts of people taking psychedelics, the whole hippie age where everybody was going around taking acid and having these, uh, you know, it's a festival type thing people talk mm -hmm. about. That's, that's really not the right attitude or mindset to have about these. It's not the only mindset to have. Yes. For not sure. The only mindset. Not the only mindset to have. And um, what's really neat with a lot of these big universities and uh, medical schools that are coming out, Johns Hopkins and NYU and Baylor and a lot of these other guys that are doing studies on psilocybin is that they're, they're, they're getting the research out to the public that these things are fantastic for, ph for uh, I almost said pharmaceutical, for therape therapeutic use. Yes. Right. It's for all the things that we mentioned a minute ago, for anxiety, depression, fear of death, for terminal cancer patients, um, addiction, all kinds of stuff. So there's a lot of reasons to take these things, whether you're just curious because you've seen, seen them in the movies mm -hmm. uh, or you've read a study online or you watched an MSNBC special like they had uh, a few weeks ago Absolutely. on mushrooms about the, uh, the therapeutic uses of them. So there's a lot of reasoning to take them. Um, a lot of people... Uh, you know, have, have heard about the introspective um, power of the mushroom, mm -hmm. your, your ability to, to take mushrooms and while you're having that experience to, to look within, look at yourself uh, through sort of a, a, an inward facing microscope and explore those inner worlds and to gain access to areas of your psyche, to be able to flip switches and twiddle the knobs, if you will, mm -hmm. in ways that you can really kind of just custom uh, custom edit your personality in real time. Yes. You know, you have traumas. We're all made up of traumas and life experiences and all kinds of, of spooky shit that happened to us. And a lot of times we're not even aware of all of the things most of the time. That's what I was going to say is you don't have to think of it like, well, I'm not depressed or I don't suffer right. from addiction. I, you know, I'm no. good. I don't need it. There's a benefit for every person. Every yeah. person out there can benefit from taking a um, psilocybin dose of mushrooms, depending on what you're going to get out of it, depends on where you're at in life and what you need. Yeah. It's, it's a need-based thing. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people don't realize what they need. I didn't, I didn't realize what I needed from mushrooms when I, when I started taking them. Yes. I was That's one of the people that... that how had, it works. Yeah, I, I read about them and I, I, I thought, maybe there's neat stuff inside that I can figure out. Maybe there's mysteries inside I can find and unlock and learn things about myself. What I learned was, I really needed help. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really was more fucked up than I realized. Well, we can all convince ourselves we don't need yeah, help. We you got it all together. But, but, but convincing ourselves that we're totally fine is what humans do best. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is accurate. You know what I mean? And so, so with the mushrooms, I started and I was just like, I'm going to go look inside and see what's there. I'm just going to maybe, maybe find some Easter eggs in there. What I found was a lot of trauma, a lot of, a lot of painful experiences, and most of all, a lot of hurtful shit that I did to other people, like namely my kids. Yeah. You know, and I've talked about this before, yeah. so we don't need to get into it again because it's on, um, we'll link uh, a recent podcast we did, um, a much longer, bigger, broader po podcast than this one that was sort of over the whole psychedelic um, context that we're talking about. So you guys can go check that out. We'll link it somewhere in this video. Pay attention for that. But um, I realized that, man, I've, I've done, I've not been a super nice, super great dad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I, I started working on that. I've not been a great friend. Right, so I started working on that. Not been a great brother, a great son. So I had all these things that were that were messed up in my personality that I didn't even know. And I and I, I you, we don't have these introspective powers to to really analyze ourselves and go, hey, need to need yeah, to do some work. We're really good at pretending those things aren't there and not seeing the forest for the trees and yeah. these blatant things in our in our our psyche and our personalities. And the mushrooms will put them under a microscope and make you 
face those, deal with those, and recognize those over an extended period of time, depending on the amount of mushrooms you take. Yeah. So different stuff. So the whys, maybe maybe you're curious. Maybe you want to look inside and see if there's any Easter eggs in there. Maybe you are aware of some traumas that you have and you want to get in there and fix those and twiddle the knobs. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of people who've been abused or had a lot of different types of childhood traumas, you can actually get in there and start reworking that stuff um, and, and gaining different insights and different angles on different memories and traumas that you have. So a lot of different reasons to do it. Uh, and we want to talk about how to do it, regardless of your reasoning. Yes. Let's make sure that our intentions are pure and we'll, mm-hmm. we'll kind of dig into that as we go. Yeah. Um, so starting with dosing, right? So there's like a tool for every task. Yes. And so depending on what you want to do and what you want to accomplish, there's different doses for that. And again, these are not, uh, there's not like a medical handbook on how to take psilocybin mushrooms. So you're getting our, this is like Adam and JC's crash course in mushrooming. Yeah, and there could be a book out there that claims that they have figured it out. But if you've ever taken mushrooms, there, there's no perfect science. There is no accurate, somebody's never going to be able to pinpoint exactly what you need. Yeah, it's not going to work that way. No. So what we can do is kind of outline what we've seen, done, and mm-hmm. um, you know, discuss with other people in, in, in our research. So as far as dosing goes, once you get past the reasoning and the why, the first thing we move into is dosing. Um, we, we sort of break it up into like three different categories of yeah. dosing. It's micro dosing, which is like the small dosing, which we'll get into in a second. Macro dosing, which is like the really big dosing. And then meso dosing. And meso dosing is that, that middle ground. So it's a wide range in between. Big range in between the micro and the macro. Um, I know I'll get in trouble by a lot of people for saying this. I call it the danger zone, or mm-hmm. at least a segment of the meso dose I call a danger yes. zone, which you're, we'll get into that. You're half in, half out. Yeah, thing. yeah, the half in, half out thing. I think it's it can be a sketchy place to be. Um, but so let's start with microdosing. Um, why do we microdose? Uh, microdosing for me uh, is... I, I always recommend anybody that's interested in, in uh, mushrooms and they've got no context at all to, to try a microdose just yeah. to kind of have an idea. It gives you the tiny little peek behind the curtain. Um, I think it's a great introduction, but it's practical applications. And what uh, I've seen to be working for a lot of people is, I mean, you wake up every day, you take a Prozac. Yeah. You take a Zoloft. How many people out there are taking Prozac, Zoloft, Adderall? I took Adderall every day for 12 years. Yeah. No one seemed to give a shit about that. No. That I mean, was okay. We're, we're putting things into our body so we can get through the day and a micro dose doesn't work any differently than that, except for that it's completely natural plant and it's going to provide somebody who takes antidepressant medication or anxiety medication, uh, help with that. Yeah. Those type of symptoms, those things, it it really does start to, um, change the way that you interact without your day. It gives you this tiny little inner glow. And if you're micro dosing correctly, you're not, having too many effects you're yeah. not really feeling. You, you don't really feel it at all it's, yes. a, it's almost indistinguishable from just a, a good balanced centered state of mind you know like i said i took adderall every day more or less for, for 12 years and uh it dehydrated the shit out of me mm-hmm. i drank water constantly and i was pissing constantly it was just like constantly running through me so if i didn't drink three gallons of water a day you know then i would just get really really dehydrated it killed my appetite, so I, I, I was like 30 pounds lighter than I am today. Uh, unhealthy uh, underweight. Unhealthy underweight, you know. Um, I didn't sleep for shit. My anxiety was through the roof, but it's what I needed to do to sit in front of a computer at a desk for eight, ten hours a day, five, six, seven days a week. Which most people years. have to do. Which most people have to do. So it's like, man, I can't. How many times have you heard someone say, like, I can't do my job without Adderall? Oh. That, I infinitely. can't get through college without Adderall. We, we all say that, right? So... Of course, my response to that is, well, maybe you shouldn't be doing that job. You know, yes. if, if you have to take some kind of a synthetic chemical to get through your day, you need to change the way your day is set up. Mm-hmm. And so what microdosing does um, for me and for a lot of people, I think, is, is uh, it, it helps to alleviate a lot of those things, whether it's um, uh, little bits of anxiety, little bits of depression, little bits of, of um uh, sort of sluggishness mentally. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's sort a of a little boost. It, yeah, uh, it gives you a little boost, a little glow, gives you a little bit more clarity. And a proper microdose, like you just said, you don't feel as much as I felt a 20 milligram Adderall I would take in the morning. I'd be driving to work. I'd take an Adderall. 
And like 45 minutes later, I'm driving to work and all of a sudden it would hit me. And I was like fucking Bradley Cooper from Limitless. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like boom and everything, everything changes and it's all crazy. And I was like, oh my God, I'm all amped up, you know? And um, man, it just messes with you. A proper microdose, you don't even realize when it hits. No. And you, you know, should That's how you know you're doing it. That's right. how you know you're doing it right is you shouldn't feel it at all, mm -hmm. you know? But so, so that microdosing is a good thing. It's healthy. It's not addictive. It gives you clarity. Uh, and you're not sticking synthetic shit into your, into your body. That's, that's, oh, also my blood pressure on Adderall. Yeah. My blood pressure was high. I walked around with a walking pulse rate of like 115 every day for 12 years. You know, that's just not, not okay, it's not, not healthy. healthy. Um, you can sleep on a microdose. You can, you know, you're, you're, you're you can eat. You can, you can eat. sleep. In well, fact, you're more in tune with your body was, and, and what it needs that when is you're on a microdose. That is super key that you just said that because um, that's the other thing is instead of Adderall making me want to starve myself, taking a microdose of mushrooms, um, you start like craving salads. Start craving fresh fruit juice. I want juice. some fruit right I want, some, I, want, I want a big old glass of carrot juice because you're so in, in tune. One of the beautiful things that mushrooms do with your body is they get you so in tune with your own body mm -hmm. that your every cell in your body starts crying out for proper nutrition, which is something that we're not typically tuned to do. And, and this isn't in every case, but I know with me on a microdose, food tastes better. Yeah. You know, people say, oh, if, if I smoke pot, I, I, food tastes better, a movie's fun. It's, it's a similar thing. You're just not stoned, but you, you do. You, you enjoy what you're putting into your body more, and you can almost instantly sometimes just really feel what you're doing for your body in that yeah. moment. It, it really gives you this clarity yeah. that, that you can't get from anything else out there. Um, a microdose can be done at work. It can be done on the weekends. It can be, if once you've got a context for what a microdose is for you, it's a practical application you can use daily. And then you'll find that after a certain amount of time, at least most people I talk to, then they don't need to, to microdose yeah. anymore. In, in a burst, a period of time, maybe a week for you. Well, it, it builds those neural pathways. Mm -hmm. it, 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 very lion's it, mane like. It, yeah, very lion's mane like. It, it stimulates neurogenesis. So it, it, it begins to, to, uh, to spark those neural pathways in your brain where, like you say, they don't, you don't need to keep doing it once you've established those things. It's like, you know, the, the animals in the woods, they keep running the same way down to the river. They end up pounding out a trail through the woods, mm -hmm. you know, and it takes a few weeks of the animals running down there. They pound out a trail, but then anybody can take that trail anytime. And, you know, it takes a long time for, the, for that trail to go away. Yeah. And our, our, our neural pathways in our brain are the same way. Yeah. Paul Stamets has the best analogy of, of sledding down a snowy hill. And after you've all gone down it a bunch of times, you start to build this trench and everybody, no matter where they start at the top of the hill, they end up in that groove. Now, what microdosing or even one big macrodose, which we'll get into, does is it puts a fresh snow pal uh, on, the, on the hill and all of those grooves are gone. And now you can start to recreate those pathways and those thought processes. And you get to kind of reset some bad habits, some trenches and grooves that you always end up going back into because they're so worn into your daily routine. Yeah. I, uh, I like that, that microdosing also uh, gets me more in touch with my compassionate and empathetic side. Because I've always Definitely. been a I've always Definitely. been a pretty left brain kind of calculating dude, as you know. Um, the last three years, that's really I've turned a big you know, made, turned a big corner in my life as far as that goes. But microdosing's had a lot to do with that. You know, when I when I you know I'm hanging out with my kids and I'm microdosing and I'm you know hanging out in the backyard, we're sitting by the pond or we're by the garden or we're with the animals or whatever. Um, man, I just want to hug them. You know, I just look at them. I'm laying in the grass, staring at the clouds with them. You know what I mean? Feeling joy and love just, and bliss. And, and, yeah, and you're, and you're tied into that. You know, a, a lot of us have a problem. I know I'm not the only one that has a problem connecting with that compassionate, that, that reach out to your child and hug them and just wrap them up and be thankful in that moment that you have access to your children and that you, you're blessed with this gift. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or your friends, your family, your girlfriend, your wife, your parents, you know, your, your, your dog. I'm a better dog owner. <laughs> you know what I microdose because I'm loving on my dog, you know, and but you're still in the state of mind that, you know, I mean, I run a technology company, mm -hmm. you but can, you can do everything. You can do it all. It's clear. I, I got to make it clear to people that you're not you're not spaced out like I'm talking about laying in, in the yard with my kids looking at the clouds and I'm just out of my mind blotto on the ground. It's like, no, I'm handling work phone calls, you know, doing conference calls and stuff like that. But you hang up the phone and you're like, ah, oh, clouds and kids and life is beautiful. It's and a that's, clarity. It's a clarity that you just don't get when you get wrapped up in the anxiety and the comings and goings of life. Yeah. It's, it's super insightful stuff. Yeah, the implications of this being, you know, readily available to people now. 
and what it's going to do. It's going to change, you know, I mean, the world. The world's going to change starting in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. It's 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 the center it's of a gonna massive from there. It's a massive change. I hope that people get I don't know how I don't know how this is going to be structured. I don't know if they're if they're if it's like going to be regulated a certain way or if it's just like fuck it, we're not giving giving taking people to jail over fungus anymore. I, I think that's kind of what right now it is. It's yeah. just a decriminalization of you're not going to get in trouble for these, but I'm sure there's, you know, federally it's still illegal and, and there's going to be some some guidelines and rules, yeah. but that'll all come in the, in the future. The, the fact is is that they've realized that this isn't a bad, dangerous drug and we don't need to be putting people in jail. Yeah, people are going to be coming um, to Denver for healing. It's a very Mecca location at this oh, point. Oh, it's Mecca. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it's the Mecca of the conscious community. It's a Mecca for... for for health in, in the United States at this point, for mental health. And how beautiful, it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Oh, wonderful. I, I, I didn't even make that see, connection. Uh, I've been wanting to do a video on this, and this is a good time to just slide this in there, that it is, it's Mental Health Month. It's Mental Health Awareness Month. And um, I went and saw a counselor this week, a um, guy who was my therapist for a, a lot of years, a good close friend of mine. It was beautiful, and I didn't even realize it was Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And then now here we're talking about mushrooms, and, and it's all there. So let me just say this, just take just a moment to say that if, if, if you're struggling with your mental health, or even if you're not, just be aware of it. Be aware that your mental health is, a, is, is, is something that you need to think about, just like your physical health is something you need to think about. And it's really easy in our society and the way that things are structured and the way that we have to go on about our days and our careers and all that to just put all that stuff to the side. But your mental health matters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, take some time to yourself. Go meditate. Go sit by the lake and stare at the, the swans. Do something for your mental health this week. Do something for your mental health every week. Do something maybe once a day for make, five minutes. Make time for it. Make, make time for it. Make time for it. It, it does matter. Um, maybe go grab a microdose in Denver. Yeah. That's a hell of a way to celebrate Mental, uh, mental Health Awareness Month. Yeah. Yeah. Microdosing is great. Check it out. Uh, let's move on. Let's, let's just skip to macro dosing and we'll come I back. Agree. You I agree. You want to do that? I agree. So macro dosing or heroic dosing is a term that, um, Terrence McKenna, uh, came up with, uh, heroic dosing. I'm pretty sure that's a, that's totally a Terrence thing, mm -hmm. um, is typically a five gram. Well, I, but micro dosing, we didn't really, we didn't really clarify. <laughs> Microdosing, yeah, the, the actual dose that we need to, to kind of put a guideline. Once again, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Some people are and very mushrooms big. Are different. Some people are very small. There are multiple types of mushrooms. You can find that information. What's a stronger psilocybin mushroom? They can measure that. You can Google that. We recommend a very, very small amount. I mean, 0 0.1, a, 0 0.2 yeah, of I mean, a gram. A quarter of a gram for microdosing, depending on what your tolerance is, mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, around a quarter of a gram, I and mean, we're talking about such a small amount that it's, it's almost hard to measure. You got to get like a micro scale to even measure yeah, it. It's very difficult. You can start learning to eyeball it. And once your tolerance gets halfway decent, you, you know, you, as long as you're in that range, you're good. It's not, it's not something you need to worry about. Like, oh my God, I'm going to take a little bit too much and my brain's going to explode. Yeah. But. In, in this context, um, if you had a psilocybin mushroom that was maybe three inches long, it should last you quite a while. If you're using it broken down a couple weeks microdose. yeah i mean it should last you a, a, an extremely long time yeah mushrooms different size caps different size stems all that stuff but quarter of a gram for your average person for a microdose is great and it will impact your consciousness less noticeably than a 20 milligram adderall i'll tell you that for sure from absolutely. personal experience absolutely 100 percent. so that's your dosing to give you a, to give you some reference microdose let's call that less than half a gram but really in my view way lower than that like a quarter of, quarter of a gram start as low as you can. start as low as you can yeah pinch off a little tip of a of a stem or something macro dosing heroic dosing five grams plus um why the hell would anyone want to take five to ten plus grams of mushrooms eh, just see how big your balls are there's this is for me the way that the work really gets done. Yeah, the, it is. When, when the mushrooms really get the opportunity to do their best work yeah. is with a big dose. That's it. It's, it's where you get to um, go into and operate in a space where you do get to flip the switches. You do get to make the changes. You get made aware of things. You get to deal with things, um, traumas, um, bad habits that you might have that you, you know, you're aware, I, I need to really cut this out of my life. It might be causing a bigger problem than you've rationalized in your own world, and mushrooms are gonna, you know, provide the opportunity for you to see that. 
um, in whatever way, shape, and form that That's they important for people to understand, I think, is that particularly at a big dose, and it even happens at small doses, but particularly at a big dose, uh, mushrooms are going to uh, hit you in the face with truth uh, in clarity that you can't um, escape. So they're just going to say like, hey, I know you've kind of in the back of your mind been thinking that maybe you have a drinking problem, or maybe you even haven't. Maybe you never even considered you that you have realize, a drinking yeah. problem. You know, you just took these mushrooms to come in here and have a good time, but let me just show you how fucked up your drinking problem has made your life. And they, it could, they confront you with it where they, they connect you with the, the cause and the effect of all of your vices, whether it's, whether it's a, 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 an external addiction or just internal personal character traits you have that are toxic, that are messing up your relationships or whatever. The mushrooms give you, they, give you a, they put you on a, a, a mountaintop and give you a perspective that you get from, the, from that mountaintop where you get to see your whole life down below, the whole landscape of your life, and, and put together, connect cause and effect, and you start to see all these spirals in your life that have happened that all started with toxic thoughts, toxic behaviors, or whatever. Um, so again, sometimes it's addiction, sometimes it's just bad personality traits, but the clarity that you see it with is so profound and so clear that it's, kind of, it's almost impossible to come back the same. Yeah. You're, you're going to fundamentally be aware of this thing, whatever it may be. It's not always bad, but yeah. most people are walking around with some sort of vice or some sort of personality flaw or change. That or tra yeah, traumas. Trauma as well. Trauma is a big one. Trauma is a big one. Um, and, and you just cannot step out of that experience when it's all said and done and wake up the next day and not still have, you know, that message yeah. carrying with you. And, you know... It, with a heroic dose, you know, five grams or more, depending on you, um, it's going to start. You're going to have to be somewhere where you can lay down. You're not necessarily going to be going unconscious, but you really kind of get, I would say, you know, glued to the floor more yeah. or less. You want to be able to lay down, stretch out, um, and it's going to take you on a ride typically Six hours yeah, four, is a four to six four hours. To six hours is a ballpark. And now everybody's different. Yeah, there's ups and downs in there too. Mm -hmm. Moments of like pseudo consciousness. Yeah, mushrooms do have a tendency, um, even at a, at the microdose level, to relax you. You know, at the microdose level, they 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 can kind of relax you. At the macrodose level, they can really just make you feel like you've melted into the in, in, into the the floor, the couch, the bed, the you know the yurt, the yes. ground, whatever you're on. Um, so be aware of that. I mean, you know, I've heard people talking about like, I want to go take a bunch of mushrooms and then, you know, go walk in the woods. Well, it's cool with a gram of mushrooms maybe, um, but you, you're taking four, five, six plus grams of mushrooms. You, you need to have a safe place to, mm -hmm. to lay down. Yes. Because your consciousness is going to um, remove itself from your meat suit and it's going to go elsewhere. Uh, so don't, don't try to do a whole lot. <laughs> Big yeah. dose of mushrooms. Don't think, count on doing much. I think a common misconception, too, about um, taking a large dose of mushrooms that a lot of people make is what you're going to experience is a you know, change in what you're seeing. Um, things are going to look different. Things are going to dance. There's going to be a color change. There's, there, there is the stereotypical symptoms, but when you're doing a heroic dose, the real work happens when your eyes are closed. Yeah. That's hundred percent true. It's behind your eyelids. It's it's you want to get somewhere where you can relax, breathe, be comfortable, and don't just stare up at the ceiling fan because it looks pretty. Because you can get caught doing that, and that's great. And if that's how you want to spend your time doing it, that's fine. If your eyes are closed, that's where the real magic is happening. Um, that's when you can really go and travel and start to be aware of this stuff. Sometimes you don't get the choice to open your eyes; they're hitting really hard. Um, but that's that's one thing to know is, yeah, I'm seeing things, and this is really crazy. Close your eyes. Yeah. That's, that's where the work really starts to take place. It does. Um, and macro dosing, heroic dosing, uh, that's where you can get into, um, I think without question, some of the most transformative experiences that a human being, yes. is, that, yes. the, that the human psyche is capable of having. You know, that's where you can go travel to places that, that you're pretty sure are not of this world and mm -hmm. meet beings that you're pretty sure are not of this world and see things that are not of this world, right? Um, we believe, and again, this is, this is, we, we expressed this in this other podcast that we did that we'll link to you guys um, with EJ from Freedom of Action. You know, just the two guys sitting here, we believe in 
in using these these plant medicines as um, uh, as, as therapeutical partners or therapeutic partners. Um, if we can't find uh, something to gain as, as, as human beings, as men, as fathers, as, as friends, husbands, boyfriends, whatever, then we're not interested in that particular thing. Yes. Right? So we say all of these things. We talk about some crazy stuff, some crazy experiences. Uh, we don't do this just to have a good time, right? And in fact, have you ever just had a good time on a trip? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had some really terrifying times on a trip I, yes, yes is that typically how it works for you uh i i find that it starts in a euphoric place yeah and then you when they fully come on you get to you get to be there and once you've adjusted then the work begins and you know with me and my experiences and what i use them to work on you know i, I know my faults and my flaws so i start to address those and you know, it always ends up going to an uncomfortable place. Maybe yeah. not a scary place. Yeah. Maybe not always a terrifying thing, but an uncomfortable, you know, it's, it's, it's not a roller coaster of fun. So to be clear, th these things are not to be used, you know, for, for escapism and just getting away from your problems. For anyone who would watch this or anyone who has, you know, friends or family or anyone out there who has a problem with these substances, I'm sure that they can be abused. We talked about this um, on the, uh, the other podcast that we keep referencing, but um, I'm sure that there are people that, that use these things to just escape from reality and go, and go bliss out. Um, I don't know any of those people. I, I don't either. I, 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 I'm told that they do exist, and I believe that. Um, I can tell you, I personally don't know how that would work. Well, I, I can't imagine taking five, six gram of mushrooms and, and, and not having my life in order and it going well. Well, and I think that's a, a segue into mesodosing. Yeah. You know, that's where... You can, you can walk the line, and I think the people that do um, end up taking these things a little too often or a little too frequently um, as escapism are in that middle range yeah. where they're not quite getting to that, uh, that really working zone. Um, I just, with a macro, you know what you're expecting. Yeah. And with a micro, you know what you're expecting. The mesodosing is not the same as that. No. But you don't always know what you're getting. So we've, uh, we call this mesodosing, uh, it's, it's the middle dose. It is. The micro, the macro, and the meso. And it's the in-between. It's the in-between. And uh, we have long said that this is, um, and again, I know we'll catch some heat for putting it this way, but I call it the danger zone. And I, and I do the, that. It's the high risk. I do it playfully. I say it playfully. Of course. Um, but but, but the, uh, the meso dose really is anything between like say two and four and a half grams, two and a half to four and a half, something like that. Yes, you think? I, I agree. I I find you know that that two to three gram trip to be the sketchiest one for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and that's where the, all this came from was that you and I both shared stories about this, and then I, we started talking to other people in the community. And it seems like just about every bad trip I've ever heard about happened in that range yes it's like the two the happens. two to four and a half gram range it's where people are having these bad times and we the best we can explain it or understand it is it's because you're half in half out i love this i love the half in half out you're half in half out you got one foot in the pool one foot in the hot tub mm -hmm. you know and it's it, your brain is trying to figure out where you are it's like you're constantly off balance mm -hmm. You know, your brain's like, okay, am I, where, am, am I conscious? Am I on Earth? Or am I in this inner universe trying to get through the, you know, the cosmos? Yeah, you're uh, not gone know. far enough that your brain still has the ability to try to make sense or try to reasonably explain what's happening. Yeah. But you're also far enough out there because of what the mushrooms are doing. It's like getting dragged behind a truck. That you're, you're, you're still tethered to the way this table should look on a normal day. And then the mushrooms are trying to do something different to it. Right. And then that rational part of your brain that's still alert and still functioning at normal starts to panic. Mm -hmm. And then you start to panic. Yeah. And that's where a lot of fear based trips will come in and bad trips will come because you're, you're half, you're half gone and you're half there. Yeah. And it just gets really confusing to your psyche. Yeah. And, and that's, um, that is you know, how it happens for a lot of people on a lot of trips. Not to say that every time you take a, a meso trip that you, you know, that it's in the middle, that that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen every time. A lot of people um, have some wonderful trips in that space. Me, I, me included. I, me included. Yeah, yeah. I, we, we've had a lot of great trips in that in that mid, in that Midgard there. But 
it's also we're just saying all this to, to, to kind of give you a to, to make you aware that that can happen in that space and so you can take whatever precautions you need to to prepare yourself mentally for that trip so that you can understand like hey if i start to things start to get sketchy or weird i need to understand that i'm half in half out mm -hmm. maybe it's time to just close my eyes sing meditate hum to myself drum on my lap with my eyes closed because you're like you said um the mushrooms are having they're impacting your your perceptual awareness your senses are are under the influence of the mushroom so this table starts to look funny and maybe there's a a demon that appears in the wood grain of this table and the rational brain is still is still awake and aware trying to figure out how to make sense of all this and it gets really it can get nauseating a lot of people throw up in that in that place yeah and that's when it's time to shut your eyes and fucking sing mm -hmm. chant well and your emotional yeah your emotional response to what's happening fuels where it goes from there so if all of a sudden you see something and your brain goes i don't like that and fear creeps in well then that starts to now fear is kind of steering the ship, yeah, and and it just can lead to a place. the The thing is, is with a macro, you know what you're getting into, and you can expect some sort of uncomfortable parts of it, but that's to be expected. With a micro, you're not going to run into that. With the meso, that middle dose, this is why we consider it the most high risk, is because you don't. There's no expectation yeah. of. There's no standard, and it's a variable and a big variable, and and that's you know, something to just be aware of because a lot of people aren't going to go straight to heroic. They're going to microdose and go, this was great. And they're going to land in the mezzo. Yeah. They're going to land. You're going to, uh, I, I would say most people are going to, you know, take two grams, three grams. Yeah. That's a common thing. Cause it's a manageable amount. Yeah. You know, and again, if you've got a good head on your shoulders and you know what you're going in there for, and you're a strong willed individual and you want to jump in into that, that, that middle, that middle arena, I think you're great. Go for it. You can have a, you can have a great time and there's no reason to, to refrain or abstain from that middle ground at all. Um, I just, I, we've always felt like this was an important conversation to have around that middle ground. Yes, and yes. I, I really do, I, th I think it is. A heroic dose or macro dose, there's not a lot of preparing you for that other than to say that you're, you, you have no power here. <laughs> you know, yeah. just go with the mushroom. I think you, you've said it before, how do you say it? You, if, there's a if there's a boat. If there's a boat in a river, go down the river. If there's a door open and if there's a staircase that goes up or down, go. Just yeah. release, relax, and that's what a macro provides is you're on a journey, yeah. and you're not, you're not stopping it. No. In a mezzo, you can kind of pause yep. and play, and it gets a little tricky sometimes. And the longer you're in there, it gets a little bit trickier. Yep. Um, so just be aware. Um, we've got some rules that we're going to outline that if you stick to those, you're less likely to have For a sure. bad experience. But just know that, you know, that middle range can be a bit tricky. It can be tricky. That's a good word for it. It can be tricky. We're not saying to avoid it. We're just saying that that's the one to be, um, I think, to be most aware of. Mm -hmm. Heroic, you can kind of surrender to the infinite. And that's an advantage. That and, th and that's an advantage that you have. And um, then, then you're kind of just at the whim of the mushroom and your own current condition in life, which we're about to get into, mm -hmm. you know. But that, that mezzo area, that's where you're. You really kind of, like you said, you have control every once in a while, kind of come to and you're like, oh, can I, you know, I, I kind of want this to stop now. Like you're, you're, you're aware and conscious enough. Mm -hmm. Occasionally you go, like, I, I kind of want this to be over with. And then it doesn't happen and then you start to freak out. Yeah. You know, when you're on a heroic, you, you're not thinking like that. No. It's no, just, no. that's. You're, you're, yeah. you're not necessarily here. Yeah, you're not really here. So um, those are the different doses. If we missed anything, we might swing back to it. But now we need to run through the things that I think a lot of people really want to understand that are asking us the questions. How and why do I take mushrooms? I'm going to do this the first time. What should I do? This is the, uh, this is the video. So um, to start with, I've got this theory I told you about earlier. Absolutely. Sounds good to you. I, I agree 100%. Um, so I, I really think, you know, we, we know that our cells replenish themselves like every few weeks. Like every three or four weeks we get a new kidney. Every three or four weeks we get new lungs. Every six weeks our heart cells completely regenerate. So I've long believed that whatever you put into your body over the course of like a six-week or two-month period is going – it can have a tremendous impact on your health. Whatever you do to your body over the course of two months because, you know, I mean, I don't know, logically, you got a new heart every two months or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think what mushrooms do is I, I think that they turn your perception inward and they sort of flush your consciousness with the content of all your cells, all your cells, 
everything that you've put into your body in the last two months, every thought that you've thought for the last two months, every bit of water that you drank in the last two months, all the stress you felt in the last two months, all that stuff is contained in your cells. It's all in every blood cell, every ass cheek cell, every eyebrow cell, every hair follicle is, is made up of cells that have only been in your body for the last six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And everything you've put into your body in that time, the air that you've breathed, you know what I mean? Everything is infused into all of your cells. And I feel like mushrooms just seem to um, just flush you know, your consciousness with, that, with the contents of all those cells. So I say all that to say this, the better you take care of yourself in the couple of months and the couple of days leading up to a mushroom trip, the better that experience is going to be 100% of the time. Absolutely, without a doubt, you have to do a little bit of work to get the best possible experience that you can. Nutrition is step one, because you can start that as early as you can possibly start that, the better. Yeah. You know, um, which is another benefit of mushrooms. You know, you're planning on taking mushrooms, so you're going to start like eating better. Yeah. You know, you're going to start drinking more water, taking yeah. care yeah. of yourself. How, how many times do you go, hey, man, we're going to go to Buffalo Wild Wings, get fucked up and get drunk tonight. We better go drink some veg veggie juice and eat some salads in the meantime. Yeah, we should cleanse. We should cleanse before we go get wasted and eat chicken wings. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you're right. It's kind of a byproduct of mushrooms, and and it's another thing that they do. It's another thing they do. Is that is, is anybody who's done it the right way knows that like the better care you take of yourself before a trip, the better off you are. Yeah. So they just kind of as a byproduct, they make you live a healthier life. Yeah. And on on nutrition, you know, you are your gut. Um, you you want to do this before, and you want to get your body healthy and everything. But then I tend to think that fasting is a very important tool the day of. Yeah. Um, eat light. Say you're on a trip in the late afternoon, evening time. Eat light that morning. Drink lots of fluids. Don't eat. Tons of fruits and veggies. Yeah. If you're going to eat anything, eat tons of fruits and veggies. Yeah. Other than that, fasting is great. Fasting. Tons of water. Tons of water. I love fruits and veggies. Get lots of, um, get lots of nutrients into your, into your body. Uh, I feel like mushrooms really don't like red meat. No, they don't like anything sort of heavy. Um, meat in general has never been a good thing the day of for me. Yeah, um, that's you. You'll experience nausea from. It. You can also go through an entire mushroom trip and not have nausea. Yeah, and these are some of the steps to try to avoid it that work for us. Um, I have had a beer and a hamburger, and then had mushrooms later that day and paid for it. Yeah, you know, um, it, it, and you know that it's from that. When you're yeah, in that place, there's no question. Your body's letting you know, hey. and your mind is letting you know, and the mushrooms are telling you. Remember that cheeseburger and beer you had? That's what, that's that that's what this is in your gut. That's yeah, you know, making you pay right now, giving you a rumbly in your tumbly. Yeah. So nutrition, big homework step that you can do to get the best product out of the mushroom. You know, get the best experience. Put your cells, fill your cells up full of good fuel. Absolutely. Lots of fruits, lots of veggies, lots of water. Leave all the bad shit out. And like you said, if you could do that, I mean, you need to do, if, if you can't do that for the entire day leading up to your trip, then you're kind of a dipshit. Yeah. I mean, I'll just say that. Don't, then you, then you probably don't need to be working with these. Mm -mm. If you can't dedicate one day to cleansing your body and treating the experience with the proper respect, you, you're probably going to deserve what you're going to get. Yeah. You're not going to have a good time. Yeah. And it's you're not, not going to have a good time. It's nobody's fault but your own. Um, but if you can do it for a couple of days or the, you know, the, the week leading up to that Friday night, that'd be amazing. And what you might find, what I've found, a lot of people find, is out of those trips, you kind of want to perpetuate that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm healthier than I've ever been, and it's because, like, I did some trips, and I was like, hey, stop drinking alcohol. Okay, that sounds good, you know. Stop eating fast food all the time. Fucking fast food all the time. Okay, I can do that. Hey, start carrying around a water jug with you and drink tons of water. You know, hey, maybe go stretch a couple hours a day. Make that part of your life. And you start doing that. Uh, and that's one of the, the, the beautiful things about this, about yeah. these, these, these medicines, is that they get you so in touch with your body. Mushrooms are amazing for that. They get you in touch with your body. And uh, like you said, they'll let you know what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. You want to eat that cheeseburger and have a beer and then come in here? Like, fuck, here you go. Yeah, there's not a lot of guesswork as to why you <laughs> spent your, your trip in the bathroom yeah. on the toilet. And that's no place to spend a trip. No. That's just not a fun way to spend the evening is... is, is half tripping or all the way tripping on a toilet either on your knees or on your butt trying to make make life happen you know what i mean and it will happen to keep the universe together 
Um, so the nutrition is super important. Pay attention to that. Uh, and that, that, again, that will be a positive spiral that you will initiate in your life where you prepare for the trip, have the trip, learn from the trip, and then want to, to, um, to perpetuate that spiral and keep that going in your life. So that'll be another good thing. Uh, moving on to uh, set and setting of the trip. So first of all, mindset coming into a trip. Mm -hmm. Very important to know where you're at. Yeah, and that's not to say don't take it if you're distressed. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Different people, right? Different strokes, different folks. Um, but y y you definitely w wanna know what you're going into the trip for. I've taken, I've taken mushrooms when I was depressed and when I was having a bad time, when I was very lonely, when I was hurting. I've done it, but I went in there still with a resolve in my heart that this was, this was an endeavor that I, I was going on willingly. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going there off balance, you know, if, if that makes any sense. How could I not be off balance if I was also depressed or whatever? You guys might know what I mean. Maybe I'm not explaining that well, but. It's difficult to explain, but, but yeah, you, you knew what you were getting into. I knew what I was getting into. I you wasn't just. signing up yeah, for it. I was signing up for this and I said, I'm gonna go in and this is probably gonna be terrifying. And it's probably going to throw me off balance. It's probably going to show me a lot of things I don't want to see. But that's what I'm going in there for. Mm -hmm. And then when I got in there and got it, and I've got tears running down my face, and I'm just sobbing you know, on the ground, and I'm like, this is what I came here for. Mm -hmm. But if you're going there thinking that they're going to comfort you, you know, or they're going to make your life better, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you just need to have a mindset before you ingest mushrooms that you are signing up to take mushrooms whether you've done it before or it's your first time you need to acknowledge to yourself this is a trip i am going on a psychedelic journey it's going to be intense i'm signing up for this yeah that's it um because there's no stopping it once it starts no. it's just not going to happen and i think you know that realization is something that we can just briefly mention too that can be startling for people when they're new to these things, these these experiences, is that you get in there and you be, it's like it's like being on on any roller coaster, um, you know there's there's that big hill at the beginning of a roller coaster where you realize like oh shit, I I can't get off of this. Mm -hmm. It's gonna go up this thing and it's click 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 and the anxiety kicks in, and some people just can't get past that anxiety, and then the thing goes down the hill, they scream, they freak out, they pass out, whatever, and then two minutes later they're done. With mushrooms, you got four or five hours of this. Mm -hmm. There's no getting off. Your senses aren't your own. Your mental faculties aren't your own. And that can be extremely disorienting and terrifying. Um, so just be aware of it. Uh, set and setting are super important. Make sure that you know what you're signing up for. Absolutely. The mindset matters. Now, as far as the setting, um, a lot of people ask me, like, I want to go, go take these mushrooms out in, the nature, out in nature somewhere or whatever. Now, we live out in the country. Yes. Um, so taking mushrooms in nature is fine because we have land and we have trees and we have stuff. You have land, though. You know, like, <laughs> it belongs. You know, it, I, I'm not catching myself in a national forest. That's my point. Yeah. Right? So, like, I, I always ask these people, like, you're going to go take these in nature. What do you mean? <laughs> you know, you're going to the city park to go take two grams of mushrooms? Cause yeah, even, like, a campground somewhere where you've rented a space, normally— 10 feet from you is another tent and then yeah. 10 feet from there is another tent and 10 feet from there is another tent. It's just not a, not yeah. an ideal setting. It's not, you really need to understand that, you know, when you take these things, there's a good chance that uh, if it's a, if it's a low dose, you're probably going to want to get up and walk around at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a very high dose, you're going to feel extremely vulnerable mm -hmm. and you are going to be extremely vulnerable. You know, I, I talked to a dude the other day uh, that hit me up in the DMS and, and uh, he was going to go out in the woods and just take like five grams. Like, what the, are there fucking black bears out there? There's mountain lions. Yeah. Like, you can get eaten by anything, you know? And, and I do a lot of the hiking and camping and stuff, like, by myself with my dog. Like, I'm not afraid of be, being out in the wilderness, right, as much as anybody. But there are real risks to going out in the woods and being completely vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And um, on, on any, you know, meso dose or above, you are very vulnerable. And so if you're going to go out in nature and take these things, A, you need to have a trip sitter. Yes. I don't recommend that, that very many people shouldn't take mushrooms without a trip sitter, and period. Let's, let's put a bullet point on that. Trip sitter, someone you trust who is not taking mushrooms and is there to kind of herd, facilitate, provide 
you know, you might have to pee. You might not know where the bathroom is yeah. and you might be in your own house. Yeah. Or you try to trip by yourself at home and, you know, the postman comes knocking on the door, you know, or the Jehovah's Witnesses or the, or the Mormons. And that door knock turns into, oh, my God, mm -hmm. this is the, the DEA or this is, you know, this is the cops or this is my mom or this is, you know, somebody's coming to tell me that my parents just got hit in a car accident. And you're, you can just spiral into all kinds of crazy stuff when you don't have someone there to act as a shield between you and your unconscious ass and the outside world. Yes. You need, you need that peace of mind. You need it. It's not, you don't even really use a trip sitter most of the time. They're, they're really a mental, it's, a men, yeah. it's like a mental, it's a safety net. So put up the proper, uh, make sure you're in the proper mindset, whatever that is. Make sure you're in the right setting. Don't go taking shit out in nature, on other people's land, in city parks, uh, at campgrounds with tents 20 feet apart. Um, you know, if you have some land or you know of a particularly safe place, mm -hmm. that's a, that's that's a diff different. It's a different story. Just be mindful of where you take it. Um, how about taking mushrooms at big parties? Absolutely not. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard no on that one. Don't, don't do it. Um, uh, I recently had somebody reach out to me who um, decided to try uh, mushrooms for the first time, and they did it at a, in a party, and they were the only one doing it. And they knew they could call me for some sort of guidance, but, you know, I'm— I basically told him, is there a closet you can go into? Yeah. Get, get away <laughs> get from everybody. Away. Go away. You know, um, you just don't want to do it. One of the big ones is don't do it around people that aren't doing it in yeah. a social setting where you're going to have to, you know, somehow have your faculties together enough to be in a social setting. Don't do it with people that aren't doing it. Um, don't do it somewhere where there's potential for you to get in trouble for yeah. being in that mind state. You know, you go to a concert and you take two grams of mushrooms and you start getting goofy and weird, you can go to jail. Yeah. That's you know, one of the biggest hazards. And even if that's not a, a, a realistic hazard, it certainly will be to you in that moment in those vulnerable states of mind because you're going to run through every imaginable scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can get paranoid in, in crowds on these things. Yes. You know, um, people take these things at these festivals. I, I'm not a festival guy. I've never really been to one. Um, not into that, but, you know, they, uh, I can't imagine taking them in a massive festival setting out in public. These are very personal experiences. Mm -hmm. And you're vulnerable. Yeah, very vulnerable. So I just, you know, I, again, this is just, this is just, uh, you know, the, the life and times of Adam and JC and our, our community. <laughs> we, just our experience. We don't fucking know. But yeah. this is, you know, we, we've, 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 we've done these a lot, and we've had a good relationship with them, and they've had a massive positive impact on our lives and on the lives of our kids, our, our, our wives, girlfriends, pets, friends, family, company, Everybody around us has benefited from our experiences, and we've benefited from their experiences. So I'm not saying we've got it figured out, but we've got it figured out for us. Yep. And it seems to work for us and a lot of our people. So we're sharing these with you guys, but please don't think that we're, we're you know, we're, we're talking down on festivals or people who go to festivals. No, not at all. That. Just for us personally and for what we use them for, that's not, you know, to, to get into to a, a proper setting, that's on you. But my ideal setting is a comfortable place that I know. Been there before. Nobody's going to be coming and going. I'm in control of that environment as far as, uh, you know, I get to be vulnerable and however I want to be on these mushrooms, and I'm not worried. You know, I'm not, uh, um, I don't have four roommates, and they all have, you know, siblings or spouses that come and go, and I'm in my back bedroom, and, and I'm worried yeah. they're going to come knocking on the door and want to borrow, you know, a yeah. video game or something. I, I like a nice, comfortable place where if anybody else is there, they're aware of the situation. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a sealed, dedicated property. Whether it's 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 a home or it's a section of the woods or field or wilderness that is is contained and secured, and the only other occupants there are people I love and trust. Yes, <laughs> that, beautiful. That's it. Yes. Um, there's that's it for set and setting. Uh, one thing I do want to say about setting all that up, uh, you know, ritual or ceremony that goes into these things. Um, I think is super important for us, and I think that it can be super helpful for anyone. I'm not going to say everyone needs to do it, but I do just want to talk for a moment about why the, the ritual or ceremony of mushrooms is important in the beliefs of a lot of shamanic cultures and why it matters to us and why it's been beneficial to us. First of all, I've done some, some, uh, some mushroom trips without ceremony, all gone bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They've all fucking been bad. Yep. Um, 
the 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 purpose of 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 every shamanic culture when they when they have ceremony is is it's to cleanse uh the space of 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 malicious uh entities or negative entities and uh and to keep it clean and to if you will put a spell on the area a spell of love and positivity and security to keep that shit out and then to facilitate you know the proper types of experience to happen within that sort of bubble mm-hmm. that 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 fortress or sanctuary that they've created that's the purpose of a ceremony so you got your you know your your sage you know you burn the sage you have a campfire you got smoke you've got flame you've got chanting you've got prayers you know ceremonial garb jewelry um essential oils and and you know different types of of things whether it's ashes on your on your head or whatever it is um all of that stuff, Palo Santo, you know, burn your sage, burn your Palo Santo, open your windows, let the spirits out. Do all these things, and look, I'm not saying that you have to believe in any of the spiritual woo-woo the way that we do, but if you just wanna think about these things from like a psychosomatic standpoint, like just imagine that, you know, your subconscious knows that you're cleansing mm-hmm. the, the, the bad juju out of the area. Let's just say it's a psychological thing, because we know that, fuck, if. If you're doing mushrooms, you better believe that something out there, psychosomatic or otherwise, is, is at work. Yes. You know, otherwise, why are you taking mushrooms? Um, and talk to me after you do the mushrooms and see if you still don't believe. Yeah, that, that was kind of <laughs> my point with the whole ritual thing. Is you'll be glad you did it, especially your first time you ever do mushrooms and you're not sure about anything that's going on. You'll be glad you took those extra steps because once you get in there yeah. and start operating in that space, you realize there's a lot at play that yeah. you're not aware of until that moment there's a lot going on around us we don't see and you, you become aware of that stuff in when you're in that mind space mm-hmm. with with the mushrooms and ceremony can be um can be extremely empowering it can be it can give you the tools and the armor and the weaponry to go into an experience um that you wouldn't have had otherwise mm-hmm. so um i believe in that i believe in, in in chanting and singing and having the right um all the right things going for you ritualistically uh and again that even goes down to your clothing and stuff like that you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I like to wear athletic clothes like uh, Under Armour and stuff like that. I see a big difference in wearing that. Um, I've taken mushrooms wearing like the synthetic, brightly colored Under Armour clothes that are just comfy wearing them around my house versus wearing, you know, like natural fibers and bamboo shorts and, you know, linen pants and tops and whatever else. Um, putting natural fabric on your body, you know, I think even down to that level. Stuff oh, like that absolutely makes a difference. And be comfortable. Be, you know, be comfortable. Above all, be comfortable. Yeah, totally. Find yourself a good place to lay down. All right. Uh, so music. Shit, man. Music's super important. I think so. I think it's um, it's a through line. Yeah. Um, gives you a gives you a heartbeat to. Yes, it's a it it, it controls the tempo, uh, which we found. Um, it controls. Uh, depending on the music, where you go and how you get there, if yeah. you will. Um, yeah. it, it, so it, much about the whole experience is governed by the music. It, it's, a, it's one of the biggest parts. Um, obviously, the mushrooms and your nutrition and your set and setting. But, you know, there's a saying in the community of people that have been taking mushrooms forever. It's a very Terrence McKenna thing, um, which is five dried grams in silent darkness. Yeah. And um, we just, that's great. If, if that's how you want to do it, in our experience, having some music that you know, that you like, that's calming, that has a positive message to it, um, that is, that's, your, that's your home. You yeah, know? you know, I've, I've said it for a long time, and, you know, I, I, I love Terrence McKenna as much as anybody else does, right? Been a fan of his for 15 years. But I've been a big fan of you know, and researcher and, and, and lover of, of the, the philosophies of shamanism for my whole life. And no shamanic cultures out there are taking mushrooms in silent darkness. That's not what they're doing. That's, no. that's a Terrence McKenna thing. And if you want to do that, that's great. But also, if you know much about Terrence McKenna, you know he wasn't a normal dude. No, <laughs> he, he operated very differently. Though. Operated on a whole different wavelength and the world's better, far better for him being here. Mm-hmm. So I'm not in any way you know, detracting from his work, but five grams in silent darkness is not for everyone. And uh, music is, uh, is a part of every shamanic ceremony that I'm aware of, hundreds of shamanic cultures around the world for thousands of years um, that have used these, these, these medicines. Um, and music, chanting, drums, 
all this stuff. Um, you know, the ayahuasca shamans sing the Icarus, and they do all this to keep the keep the malicious spirits away, to keep the negative spirits away. Um, I've got a playlist. Anyone who's watching this video that wants a copy of this playlist, I'd be happy to send it to you. I can share it with you on Apple Music. Um, but it's uh, it's Trevor Hall. It's 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 all Trevor Hall, and it's it's specific songs of his. It's I mean it's it's almost all of these certain three albums of his albums called uh, Fruitful Darkness. One's called Kala, K-A-L-A, and one's called uh, Chapter of the Forest. And then there's a handful of songs off some other albums. But these are, I've, you know, I've Taylor fitted this playlist for Ceremony. And it, wor it, it works great. And um, it also, it, the way that that music specifically is written and the messages in it, and there's meaningful stuff into it, it can invoke and awake certain things in your trip and, and boost all of a sudden it's taking you to a place better or yeah. it's, you know, one song ends and another song comes on and you're starting to go somewhere. You're, you're drifting out of where you're really liking to operate and a song can pull you yeah. back into the goal, the, the good. You the know? songs are so important, you know, and, and even, even, even McKenna said, and anyone who's worked with psychedelics and especially in, in shamanic settings knows that if you're ever, ever having a bad trip, you can, you can usually sing your way out of it singing your way out of a trip is a thing um and with with this playlist that we've we've been using at our ceremonies with with trevor hall um it, it's really hard to get stuck in a bad spot mm -hmm. because he's just you know this dude sings with a lot of love and he sings with a lot of insight and a lot of spiritual depth um his rhythm and everything that he, his cadence everything that he brings to the table musically and spiritually I swear to God, it just feels like he wrote all these songs to guide people through mushroom trips. It's a very shamanic type thing, and, and uh, it, it works. Now, everybody's different. Yep. Everybody's tastes are different. And I've had a Trevor Hall song send me <laughs> <laughs> to a bad place yeah. um, very famously in our you know, tribe. But uh, it, it, it is an important thing to think about and have prepared and ready. Um, in whatever capacity that you can and have access to that playlist, you might need to skip a song. You might need to start a song over. You kind of want to have a plan for that. You know, we always have the cell phone handy Bluetooth and it's even under that condition. Nope, not that one. You yeah. Can, you can, you can one shuffle. button. Yeah. And you can get through. And it's just a really important thing that, that I would recommend over putting a movie on, you know, or that's, a television that's a, that's show. That's a really, that's a really good point. Yeah. I, I, I do dig darkness. Um, just not silence, mm -hmm. but uh, campfires are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Campfires are wonderful if you're doing it in an outside setting or a fireplace inside. Obviously, make sure it's safe and you're not burning shit down because yes. whatever. Um, or some kind of a simple light that you can fixate on, you know, even if you have like one of those ocean lights like we had shining at the mm -hmm. ceiling. You know, a screensaver on your a computer. Screen screen saving your computer is, is just as good as anything. Yeah, yeah, anything like that. But I, I really like to stay away from imagery like a tv like we i think we've tried before like having a beach setting on a tv or something i think that went south <laughs> it, yeah it, it did it did what would change from like pictures of clouds and the blue sky to a beautiful beach to yeah. a picture in a forest and you you don't need that yeah you don't it's, it kind of gets in the way yeah it gets in the way you don't need that so, so um get music that's that's uplifting. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, I say uplifting. I don't want to say that uplifting. Not uplifting, but you don't want any sort of. Darkness. You don't want to bring <laughs> darkness into the space. Yeah. Unless it's fruitful darkness. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just go look at the albums and go check out the music. I'm, you know, there's a million different things you could listen to, but listen to the things that we just threw out there for you. And if you want the, the, the playlist, hit me up and I'll send it to you. Hit me up on, uh, on Instagram. You'll find your way with the music. You'll find your way. You'll see what we mean, though. Um, run through this real quick scheduling and obligations This is the one that i find is is really important that people neglect even our close friends have made this mistake before um take time out of your schedule put it down and know if you're going to trip on a saturday you better have nothing to do on that saturday no obligations especially after that needs to be the last thing on your agenda for the day is i'm tripping and that's it you know you can't go well, I'm going to take two or three grams at two in the afternoon, but it's all got to be wrapped up and over because I have plans at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> Don't do it. It's not going to work out. You're going to start gonna thinking about time. that obligation that's coming and it's going to go south. So schedule properly. I recommend if you're doing anything higher than a, a micro dose 
or a one gram dose, you need to have the next day to kind of process, yeah. recharge. You're gonna get just squeezed. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna feel like you did a workout. Some I normally wake up feeling like a million bucks. Yeah. But that's because I wake up and I know I don't have anything for the day and I get to just appreciate the experience. Yeah. My recommendation is to not have anything on the docket, never trip before an event, and if you can, take the next day. Yeah. I, I, next love, day. I love Friday nights. Mm -hmm. I love Friday nights for a good trip, you know? If you can allot yourself a decent Friday, yeah. you know, to operate all day Friday in a, in a good spot. If you're at that's work a, yeah, and you don't like point. your job, you know, um, and you're stressed out all day, you might not have enough time between after work, coming to home decompress. to unwind and decompress. That's a good, that's a great, that's a great, super important point. Absolutely. You know, if you have a, yeah, if life's good on Friday, okay. But if you're not that guy, you know, if that, if that's, if it's tough for you to get your mental balance mm -hmm. in, in line by Friday night, then Saturday would be your day. Yeah. You wake up Saturday morning, eat a bunch of fruits and veggies for, or fruits and all that stuff for breakfast. We have to think about it in the context of a lot of these people that if you're not living in Denver, you're taking a trip. Yeah. So don't schedule a fly in Friday afternoon. I'm going to have my psilocybin experience on Saturday and I'm going to fly home on Sunday. You know, I wouldn't recommend trying to squeeze it all in that fast. You know, just a lot time to process. Um, we're going to touch on integration, but you got to have time to do that stuff. Yeah. The work that really gets done that, uh, you know, really changes your life with psilocybin mushrooms happens after you trip them. Yeah. Not during the trip per se. A lot of happens there, but it's after. Yeah. The realizations happen during the trip, but then the integration happens after -trip. the trip. So, and that's where, the, that's where the, the results come about. Yeah. So yeah. schedule the time, put your phone away, put it on silent and put it in another room. Yeah. Make sure that you're not expecting a call. If you have, um, you know, if, if you, you live with um, a girlfriend or a wife, make sure they're aware, make sure they know, don't have that secret. Oh, they're calling me. I, I gotta, you know, I gotta take, you, you, yeah. can't, you can't do you, that you to can, yourself. Yeah, you can't, it's the worst, the worst thing imaginable. It's like trying to hide from someone that you're taking mushrooms. So you're like, I'm gonna keep my phone by me. So in case they are gonna text me or call me, I can pretend, I can just tell them I'm at my buddy's house playing poker. Yeah, it's not Fuck gonna work that. out. And if you can't tell that person, or, or there is somebody that might, derail you need to let that person know whether it's somebody from work or a family member or something that you know just happens to call and bug you or anything like that that you're unavailable you know you need to come up with a good reason like hey i'm going to do this and i'm not going to be able to answer my phone until tomorrow yeah let them know because uh, a text or a call can th just throw, oh, yeah, it can derail it, the whole thing. It can throw everything off. You can't do anything in that state of mind. You, I, 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 there's no reason to have your phone other than whoever's controlling the music. And even then, if you can keep it on airplane mode, do not disturb. That's the way to go. Absolutely. But, you know, there's just no reason to have your phone. I don't care if what tragedy has befallen what member of your it's family. It's going to have to wait. It's going to have to wait because there's nothing you can do about it. All that's going to happen is it's going to send you into the worst time of your life. So scheduling obligations make sure you have that stuff in order um let me hit i guess we can hit integration and frequency sort of at the same time frequency how often do we do mushrooms depends on the person i'm a big advocate of sort of um seasonal cycles mm -hmm. you know do it quarterly do it every full moon yeah, do it every new moon try to do it in a way that's you know a natural sort of cycle the changing of the seasons yeah and by quarterly Four times a year, if you're doing a big dose, yeah, that's that's my that would be my max. Yeah, you know, um, personally, I have had such um, growth from my last heroic that it's been months and months and months since I've had any sort it's been of almost a year, almost a year, and that's because I haven't felt that calling, and you know, uh, I I don't force a trip, and I've just had so much luck integrating what I learned on my last trip that my life is tremendous. I'm not suffering from the same sort of um, things and, you know, I had depression and anxiety throughout my life, riddle me and stuff. I'm operating in a space where that doesn't exist for me. When I feel like I'm ready to go back, I'll go and have another trip. But with frequency, everybody's different. But I would say, man, yeah, quarterly is about a max. Yeah. You know. Um, a lot of shamanic cultures give a shit about the seasons. And they follow, they keep up with the seasons. And they understand that human beings have 
a relationship with the earth, with the earth cycles, with the sun cycles, and that we have our own internally, our own winter, summer, spring, fall, and we, we go through these, you know, rises and falls in our productivity and our, our, all of our natural internal cycles. Um, I find that to be the case personally. I've, I've, I've makes found a lot of sense, found a lot of my own rhythms, you know, and, uh, try to help, help other people identify theirs. And if you can sort of ride those waves and, you know, and look for whether it's your, your new moons or full moons or the changing of the seasons or whatever, a lot of times you can look at what's going on in your life and, and sort of identify, start to identify how those cycles are working. You and I have been through these discussions, mm -hmm. you know, and you find these cycles in your own life and, and they, they often almost always correlate with, I mean, certainly in the more imbalance you're living with your natural sort of state of truth, the more I think you align with natural cycles, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, taking mushrooms on those special times at those special new moon, full moon, changing of the seasons, whatever, equinox, solstice. Um, there's a reason why all the ancient people do that, why the shamanic peoples do that. And um, it, it, it's a natural spacing, you know, as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to try to, not a lot, but I, I, I guess some people think, you know, take these every weekend or something like that. I, I can't imagine. Yeah. I don't think that you'd want to do that. Um, microdosing is different, obviously. Yeah, microdosing. Microdose all the fucking time. Even, you know, mesodosing, you can get away with, and that's where people get in trouble with, you know, sometimes too frequently with the mesodose. But when it comes to a big, heavy, I'm going to do some work. Yeah. Those things have to be... I like to have some space. Yeah. I like to have some breathing room because you just have so much to unload. Yeah. You know, when you get into integration and using what you learned, you might not have a revelation of to what that thing that happened to you meant for six weeks. Yeah. You know, I've had it go. I, Absolutely. I've, I've been driving down the road three months later and went, wow, that's what that meant. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And once you make those revelations, sometimes they're instant. You know, sometimes you're getting beat over the head with a stick of a message. And you can wake up the next day and go, all right, I got to do something about this. Yeah. But you have to wake up the next day and go, all right, I'm going to do something about this. You have to make that decision, you know. Um, but the, you, you just need time um, in between these things. And some people, you know, they, they do it once. They do one big dose and their life's changed forever. Yeah. And it's not something that they integrate into their lives on a regular basis ever again. You know, it's, it's you as a person. So integration is the thing. We talk about these experiences and what the experience itself can be like. You go on a trip, you see some things, you, you gain clarity, you have all these profound realizations, all this stuff, um, good times, bad times, music, set, setting. What does it all matter if you're not integrating the lessons that, that, you're, that you're really exposed to yes. on these experiences, right? And so um, it's, it's, it's really difficult for me to, to understand how a person could have a profound experience on mushrooms and then not come back and go, holy shit, I need to do some work. You know, because I know that when I, I got hit in the head by this stuff and it was like, I had no choice. Mm -hmm. It was like, dude, you're a bad dad. You're a bad person. Well, I wasn't bad, but it, you know, it, it was, I was saddled with this enormous guilt that I was. Mm -hmm. In reality, it was just a lot of things I didn't realize I, was, I could do better. You know, set my kids down. I'm like, look, some shit's going to change. <laughs> you know, you guys start holding me accountable to my kindness, my openness, my understanding, my patience. This is the kind of relationship I want us to have. Yeah. And over the last three years, it's become the most beautiful relationship with my yeah, kids. You're a wonderful father. Thank you so much. So are you. So, but that came from integrating the lessons that I learned. And integration just for you guys is, you know, is taking the lessons, the, real, the realizations that you learned or that, that you were exposed to, um, learning the lessons from that, and then integrating work into your life that reflects those lessons having been learned. And this is also why I think that periodic visits um, back to the mushroom are cool, are, are, are helpful and productive, because um, you, know, you integrate lessons over, let's say, a, you know, a, a three-month period, and then you come back. And there may be, there may be a reward waiting for you there. Yeah, there may be this a is very true. Maybe a beautiful a beautiful message of clarity that you receive, you know, from 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 the mushroom that says, "Hey, man, you've really done a good job, you know, doing these things, and good job on those things." Hey, there's a couple of other things that you still could work on. The, you see, it, here was this conversation you had with your wife, you know, where you were a little bit short or rude, or you didn't understand where she was coming from, and you didn't handle that well, mm -hmm. you know. Next time that happens, here's a better way to handle that, mm -hmm. you know? And so you're coming back for checkups quarterly instead of 
a long period of time, you know, because you might come back after a long period of time like you've been going. Not that I'm saying that you should have been doing this all the time, but, you know, it's just, it's just a different way of approaching it and going, I'm going to do this periodically, and that way I can track my integration you get progress. You status, yeah, status progress updates. reports you get prog- and stuff. <laughs> that's a, yeah, you get progress reports from the mushroom whenever you're doing periodic integration checkups. And that's good to have. And it, and it, it also keeps you focused on the tasks at hand because it's such a visceral reminder of what's going on. But, like you said, if you don't feel the calling, then you don't force it. No. You know what I mean? I, I, I became really interested in the progress reports. I became really self-critical and really like, okay, am I doing, you know, I'm, I'm a task-oriented dude, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, am I doing the work enough? Am I doing good enough? All right, let me come back in three months and try and keep checking up. Sure. And not everyone needs that. Not everyone needs that structured sort of approach. So you don't ever want to force it. No. But you just want to integrate the lessons that you learn. But you do. You have to do the work. You, and it, the you, work is never done. The work is never done. And it's easy to start and not finish. Um, it's easy to not start at all. Yeah. You know, um, it's hard to believe that there are people out there that wouldn't come back from these experiences and not do the work. But sometimes the things you need to work on are really difficult to yeah. fix. So you just have to try to keep as much of that with you and just, just use it. Um, it doesn't help. The whole purpose of this is to change your life, is to make your life better. And they can in a way that you just cannot imagine until you've had that experience. But they don't just, it's, it's not a quick fix. They yeah. don't do the work for you. They show you what needs to be done. They help you with that. But you have to put in the time. Yeah. Ashley, Ashley says that mushrooms are like windshield wipers. Yeah. You know, they just, they, they clean all the gunk off and you can see clearly. You know, you ever go get your car washed or get new windshield wipers on and you're like, whoosh, 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 holy crap. Like, I didn't realize there's leaves on the trees. I can see it. Integration is super important. They'll show you everything that you can imagine in perfect clarity. What you do with that information from that point forward is going to determine the progress that you make and, you know, really ultimately decide whether or not these things are, are just something recreational that you can do in your life, which is fine. I'm not here to pass judgment, but they can be so much more. Mm-hmm. Change your life. I can totally change your life. Hundred percent. That's um. I mean, I think that's the meat of it. Yeah. You know, honestly, this is uh. We went a little bit longer than what we we wanted to, but I feel like we 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 hit everything we needed to, and we got the information out that we wanted to get out. Absolutely. It's a very 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 special time, guys. Um, if you've never taken mushrooms, I want I can only imagine how crazy all of all of this uh seems to to anyone else. But if you have, you know what a, what a huge victory this is for. Um, for the for the freedom of humanity, it really is that that level of deal. To to be able to have sovereignty over your own consciousness is to really be free, and to not have sovereignty over your consciousness, there's no kind of freedom there at all. You know, if we're if we're not free to 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 go into the safety of our own home, our own property, with loved ones, and explore the depths of our own consciousness and and heal ourselves of natural traumas and cultural conditioning and and negative life experiences, and to to rise above all that conditioning and become the captains of our own soul, we're not free. And the people in Denver, as of yesterday, May 8, 2019, on this beautiful historic day, they have that freedom. And I can't wait to see this spread like wildfire across the rest of the Absolutely. country. So you guys, hopefully this has been um, helpful for you. We enjoy having these conversations. I'm really happy that we finally got this done. Um, please point your, your, your friends, family, loved ones, uh, anyone interested in um, in, in working with these magic mushrooms, these beautiful uh, gifts that we get from nature, um, point them toward this video if you think it's going to be helpful and let us know uh, if you felt like it was because we always love to hear that. And we do this stuff, honestly, we don't get paid to do this. No. We, we do this because we love you guys. Um, you know, we, we, we could be working and making money right now, <laughs> but we, 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 we were so excited about this day and, um, and to get to share this conversation with you guys. And I hope that it helps you out. Um, so thank you guys so much. We're going to sign off. May the light be upon you. May peace be within you, and may you be a son on the paths of all men. Love you guys. Peace out.